The winds have changed. Yet another fishing season has come to an end. Nasi, fevered rituals barely mask the strife. Our experience of the Orissa coast was full of paradoxes. We watched turtles float free and found them trapped in fishing nets. Saw fishermen haul in a good catch and other nets drawn up empty. Found fishing villages buzzing with activity and harbors at a standstill. We captured the magnificence of mass nesting and discovered beaches lined with carcasses. We saw women and children rescue turtle hatchlings and found fishermen drowned in debt and despair. Each year between November and April, the fishing season in Orissa coincides with the arrival of the Olive Ridley turtles. Each year, debates are refueled as dead carcasses start getting washed ashore. While it is clear, that bottom trawl nets used by fishing vessels is one of the main reasons for turtle mortality on this shore. In recent times, even traditional fishing has come under scrutiny. And with that, have risen questions about their livelihood. We first came to Orissa Soon after a consortium, the OMRCC, Orissa Marine Resources Conservation Consortium, was formed, comprising various stakeholders in turtle conservation along the Orissa coast. All the various people engaged in, this, in turtle conservation of fisheries in Orissa really have their own account of what the problem is and what the solution is. Protection of the turtles is important because once the species drops to the extent where it needs human protection, I really think that the species is done for. It just seemed to some of us really bizarre that traditional fishermen in Orissa and turtle conservationists were not fighting side by side to keep the trawlers out. The main thing is right now, the state government is not interested in turtle conservation. But there are much, much bigger issues which are coming up which will prove to be the final death knell for the turtles. It's not the end of the species. They're going to be here for a little longer. Enough time for us to actually try something a little more creative. Our interaction with the consortium brought us face to face with several truths and realities. And we were left with many questions and concerns. What defines a traditional fishing community? Are there nets safe for turtles? Do we need a protected marine space for turtles? Or can fishing communities play a pivotal role in protecting them? And finally, can turtle conservation and traditional fish workers' livelihoods 
go hand in hand. Between the months of November and January, the Olive Ridleys arrive in the Orissa waters in hundreds of thousands. Orissa's Olive Ridleys are believed to be distinct and ancestral to other populations worldwide. They congregate here mostly within five kilometers off the shore. The females will go on to lay their eggs on the nesting beaches in about 50 days. There are three main nesting areas along the Orissa coast. Gahirmata in the north, Devi in the middle and Rushikulya towards the south. In 2004, the Central Empowered Committee a Supreme Court body issued recommendations to regulate fisheries in these three locations to reduce turtle mortality. It is in Gahirmata that the strictest regulations apply. The fishermen here are therefore the most affected. To understand this better, we headed out to sea with Shubhash Mondol, a fisherman and boat owner from Kharinasi. Kharinasi is a fishing village on the southern coast of the Gahirmata Marine Sanctuary. Gahirmata was declared a marine sanctuary in 1997. The sanctuary is divided into a core and buffer area and it is spread over 1434 square kilometers. The core area is a complete no fishing zone. Here, boats up to 10 horsepower have to go beyond 10 kilometers to fish. Boats above 10 horsepower and trawlers are totally banned throughout the sanctuary. Gahir Mata has in the past seen heavy turtle mortality due to illegal fishing. To us, it seemed perfectly sensible to have one protected area for turtles in this entire 480-kilometer coast. Since the traditional boats here are bigger with 10 horsepower engines, 10 kilometers seem to be a reasonable distance for them to travel to reach their fishing grounds. But as we spent more time with the fishermen, we discovered the ground realities. The fishing villages here do not have direct access to the sea. The boats have to travel first through a creek for about two hours just to reach the river mouth and then travel another 10 kilometers through the core area to finally reach their permitted fishing grounds. The layout of the sanctuary leaves fishermen with no option but to go through the core area. <laughs> Even at the edge of the river mouth, where fishing is permitted, fishermen are often harassed by the forest department.
ridden with practical problems and desperate for a living, fishermen here would rather risk getting arrested than travel for hours to cross the prescribed 10 kilometer distance, which in effect translates to roughly 20 kilometers from their villages. <laughs> the next morning we came across fishermen in small non-mechanized boats Madhav Das has to row two hours every day to fish near the river mouth. আমাদের পরিবারে হচ্ছে আটজন নজন খেতে একাই আমরা রোজগার করে সংসারটাকে পরিবেশন করি। পাড়ে আমরা 100-200 টাকা করে ইনকাম করি। যে আমাদের ফরেস্টার ধরে মাধ্যম করে যে এখানে আর আসবে না তথাপি মাধ্যম খেও আমাদের আসতে হয় না হলে তো আমরা the ban seemed irrelevant for a simple fisherman like Madhav Das. Even within the marine sanctuary, this fishing practice could only be considered low impact. From the simplest fishermen in a small tepa to the Gahir Mata fishermen in their large wooden boats, gill nets are used by all. The CEC has recommended monofilament gill nets not longer than 300 meters in length with small mesh size not exceeding 140 millimeters. Multi-filament nets of any mesh size are not allowed. The reason for restricting the gill net to 300 meters stems from the fact that turtles are air-breathing animals. Shorter nets make it possible for the fishermen to pull out the net every one or two hours, making it possible for any entangled turtles to be released. Gill nets used by fishermen in the bigger boats are both multi and monofilament and usually much longer than 300 meters. Since these nets are harmful for turtles, the Gahir Mata gill netters can change to CEC approved fishing practices. But even if they do, the fact is they still have no feasible fishing grounds. They just don't have an area to fish. In fact, the fishers department should not have allowed so many boats to be registered in that village. And this conflict has to be resolved. I don't know how it will be done because obviously there is no space available for so many boats. Complete bans with no options is the end of the road for many families. So, manu jekhan khoti kosto the. Tar jono alternative bostha. Jero kam doorun kudi kilometer baire jete holle. Ta boda boat dorkar, boda engine dorkar. E jono subsidy kimba kono bank scheme government korar uchit. Naalo onno side kisu dekta, kisu maachcha se jono pukur 
বড় বড় পুকুর করে দিলে সেখানেও মাছ চাষ করতে পারবে কি অন্যান্য সুযোগ সুবিধা তাকে সৃষ্টি করে দিতে হবে যেরকম আমাদের সাত মাস ফিশিং বন্ধ থাকছে হয়তো একটা মাসে একটা পরিবার চলতে হলে তিন হাজার টাকা দরকার একটি মাসে এরকম ভাবে যদি সাত মাসের পয়সা তাকে দেওয়া দিয়ে দেওয়া হয় তাহলে মধ্যে চলতে পারবে policies that impact the daily livelihood of these fishermen need to consider what is at stake alternatives need to be worked out beforehand and not as afterthoughts as we headed back to karinasi we saw a trawler fishing not even half a kilometer from the shore trawlers are supposed to remain 20 kilometers from the high tide line but many continue to trespass into the core area the cec has given clear directives to the forest department to patrol the area our enforcement i should say is very very feeble we have really not been able to enforce this thing very rigorously because we are only having two three patrol ships patrol uh, trawlers on each and day and night we cannot do it also we are doing it mostly by the day only so people are doing illegal fishing by the night time also though the money was given to them they used it elsewhere so they should have uh, acquired speed boats because right now the immediate urgent piece of equipment is a speed boat which none of the departments have actually a speed boat is uh, obviously the solution but uh, along with the boat we will also have to acquire the crew then we should also have work so for its maintenance so it is a full time job to acquire a fleet of speed boats and all and one boat will not be sufficient we need seven seven eight of them so we have seven eight of these speed boats and then the crew for that then the maintenance facilities uh, that kind of money really we don't have 40 coastal kilometers out of 480 reserved for turtle conservation and marine rejuvenation seems a valid and important allocation especially since the rest of the coastline is open to fishing but is this model of conservation really working on the ground illegal fishing continues turtles continue to die and confrontation with the forest and fisheries are on the rise this is the gahin matha marine sanctuary roughly around 800 700 odd square kilometer but if you look at the major turtle congregation there is one congregation here and there will be one congregation down south and these congregations are restricted in an area of 50 to 60 square kilometer or say around 70 square kilometer area so the point of saying here if you intensify your patrolling in this 70 75 square kilometer area station your patrolling vessel in this turtle congregation and deter fishing vessels from operating these places and fishing in these areas then you can bring down to your mortality to a large extent According to turtle biologists like Bivash Pandav, turtle congregations are almost entirely found within 5 km from the seaboard. If the patrolling is intensified around the turtle congregation and travels with the turtle movement, turtles will be protected even if they move out of the sanctuary area. Trawlers kill turtles only when they enter into turtle congregations. and uh, gill nets also kill turtles only when they fish close to turtle congregations prevent fishing vessels from entering into those areas and minimize turtle mortality It was mid February in Rishikulya. We were here to film the Aribada. One of the world's most amazing marine occurrences. It is believed that almost 50% of the world's olive ridley population arrives on this shore to nest. Discovered in 1994, Rishikulya has seen regular mass nesting. since 1997 this year saw the arrival of more than 200000 turtles believed to mature between 30 and 50 years these turtles return to nest on the same shore that they were born in recent years researchers have found that the olive ridleys have reduced in body size indicating a possible decline in adult population 
there is no way of knowing how many surviving turtles there will be in the next reproductive generation. So while their population may seem to be safe, the current arrival index does not reflect the expected numbers of the future. We were with the Greenpeace team on a turtle walk along the Devi beach in March 2006. Devi has not had mass nesting since the super cyclone, but it is still an important sporadic nesting beach. At night, we observe the nesting trails. But it is with daybreak that the real picture dawned. Turtle carcasses were littered across the beach like debris. In March, Greenpeace did a count of 2,217 dead turtles in a span of 60 kilometers. A mass nesting site possibly till about five or six years ago. Today, one is talking about this having become a sporadic nesting site. So we're looking at a situation where possibly we run Aribada down the drain. Why is turtle mortality so high in the Devi area? Devi mouth there is rampant trawling throughout the season, day and night, and there is no patrolling as a result of which there is heavy casualty there. The trawlers in Orissa use bottom trawl nets that drag on the ocean floor and trap anything and everything that comes in its way. Turtles get trapped in these nets as incidental catch when these nets are dragged in the turtle congregation zones. Once trapped in these nets, the turtles remain submerged for hours and they drown and die. Right in the Devi River mouth, there are two very large fishing bases. Ostarongo and Nuagad, the jetties and all. Thousands of fishing vessels operate on those bases. We have no control on them. It's the fisheries department which can regulate control them. And why should they? Their mandate is to increase the fish catch. Their mandate is not to say protect the turtles. And there are no turtles to be seen in that area. We also go on patrolling for 10-15 kilometers in the sea. There are no hardly any turtles seen in the river mouth area. So why should we blindly curb all these fishing activities? The fisheries department also seems unconcerned about regulating the excessive boat numbers plying these near shore waters. We have supplied tails to almost all the trawlers. So there is no point of uh, where the trawlers are operating. Or... Teds or turtle excluder devices are mandatory for all trawler nets in Orissa. Teds are stitched onto the nets and serve as trap doors through which turtles can escape. The government staff was also with us. The NGO was also with us. They were fishing in a trail and they were fishing in a bigger trail. But in a bigger trail, they got 50 kilo, 60 kilo. And in a trail, they got 5 kilo. 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 If turtles have to be saved, the discussion around trawlers cannot end at the use of teds. Day trawlers fish for shrimp illegally within the prohibited 5 km zone and cause almost the entire turtle mortality that is attributed to trawlers. They unproductively drag offshore waters and also end up being a grave threat to turtles. There are no winners in this situation. It has now become imperative to phase out day trawlers. Despite hard times, a troll fish worker from Astrang has designed an indigenous protective device for turtles in an effort to find a solution for both fish workers and the turtles. The troll guard is a large mesh 
put right at the mouth of the troll net. This way, the turtle cannot enter the net, while there is no loss of fish catch. Orissa is one of India's poorest states. In the Human Poverty Index, Orissa ranks 31st out of 32 states. Forty-seven point five percent people here live below the poverty line, with more than seventy thousand fish workers along this coast. It is crucial to ensure their livelihood and survival within the conservation strategies. If there was enough emphasis in this state from the departments as well as from conservation groups on fisheries itself. And if everyone started asking for better fisheries management, it would, by default, you would be protecting the species because that would mean that the mechanized fishing, which is now identified as one of the biggest problems for you know, contributing to mortality, they would be out of your near shore waters. From incidental catch to incidental conservation, I mean, we don't even have to worry. I mean, you know, concentrate on turtles to protect turtles in Orissa. You know, we could just concentrate on local, on traditional fishing, and end up protecting turtles. It was almost 45 days since the nesting. Time for the hatchlings to emerge. The sight of thousands of hatchlings carpeting the beach at night was incredible. Each one pushed its way up through the sand and headed off gingerly towards the luminance of the sea. By morning, many hatchlings are disoriented and start heading off in the wrong direction. A large percentage of eggs and hatchlings would be destroyed without the help of local volunteers from these villages. Every morning, women and children from nearby villages come to collect these hatchlings and release them near the water so that their journey is less fraught with danger. This collective effort has now grown over the years and even the forest department now involves the locals to help them with the hatchlings. The hatchling survival rate is 1 is to 1000, and these simple efforts on the ground definitely ensures the survival of many of Orissa's future turtles. on to Kharinase in Gahirmata to complete our own journey across the Orissa coast. We went to meet Aruti. Her husband Gorung used to be the village headman. Gorung had four boats. However, two years ago, heavily in debt, he poisoned himself. <laughs> তখন বোট বাড়ে চলা বন্ধ হয়ে গেল অনেক দিন দিন হয়ে যাওয়ার থেকে উনি নিজেই বিষ খেয়ে নিজে জীবন নিজেই ত্যাগ করে দিল আর কি সে ভাব যে এই বোধহয় বোট চলবে বোট চলবে এই করে করে অনেক দিন দিন লোকের কাছে হয়ে গেছে লাশে তার বোট চলতে পারলো না বোট ক্ষত হয়ে গেছে বোট ধরা পড়লো এই ভাবে আস্তে আস্তে শেষ হয়ে গেছে সবকিছু গোরুমস ভিডো আরতি এন্ড এল্ডার ডটার make puff rice packets and sell it to the local shop. The younger daughter now rules beeries to earn for the family. Mm -hmm. 
মানে তো এখন টাকার গদিতে ছিলাম আর কি আমি এখন ভিখারি ইন ডিসেম্বর 2005 বিধানস ব্রাদার বিদ্যাধর হং হিমসেলফ হি ওয়াজ এ ফিশ ওয়ার্কার এন্ড ইউজ টু আর্ন এ লিভিং ওয়ার্কিং অন डिफरेंट বোটস সেনচুরি ডিক্লেয়ার পর থেকে ওয়ার প্রায় বন্ধ করে নিজে খাওয়ার জন্য ভি বহুত অসুবিধা হতো প্লাস যে ঋণ করছিল বোটে থেকে ওই বোটের ঋণে সে সব সময় জর্জরিত লোক আসি ও খুব বলবে কি পয়সা দাও ও আসি দুই পয়সা দাও ও আসি পয়সা দাও ভরসা যাচ্ছে কি মাছ হবে মাছ হবে যাব ফিশিং মাছ হবে তাহলে কিছু আনলে কিছু ঋণ সুদ কিন দেখার হলো মাছ হচ্ছে না প্লাস আবার ঋণ গ্রস্ত হচ্ছে বারবার এভরি ইয়ার ফর দ্য লাস্ট 4 ইয়ার্স দে হ্যাভ বিন ওয়ান অর টু ডেথস ইন দিস এরিয়া দিস সুইসাইডস are just indicators of what can get escalated in the near future. Total protection is priority. But human deaths, despair and destitution cannot be the side effect of conservation. While the discussion swings between turtle conservation and the livelihood of very poor people What could spell the real disaster for Orissa turtles is the acute threat to their habitat. There are much much bigger issues which are coming up which will prove to be the final death knell for the turtles which have got much greater implications than trawling illegal trawling or lighting and all that because we are having a port which is being built by the Tata company at Dhamara River mouth which is only 12 km away from the largest nesting ground in the world the Nassi Islands. I think the great fear today is not that one port will be built at dhamra but that five to six ports will be built along the coast that there will be oil exploration and gas pipelines and all of these things in a recent study by wildlife institute of india four turtles fitted with satellite transmitters were monitored and found to travel very close to all these proposed development sites changing the poor fisherman or the trawler owner but if these things come up the dhamra port or the pasco or the reliance this thing then i don't think the turtles will be doomed i don't see a future for the turtles if all these developments really take place through our frequent journeys across this shore there was a shift in our understanding too the paradoxes had receded while concerns persisted there also seemed to be some answers within the orissa turtle conservation movement could evolve into a fine attempt of human will several thinking minds and groups are working towards open dialogue and shared ideas be it conservationists suggesting a more rational planning of protected spaces and focused patrolling of congregation areas local communities volunteering to save each and every hatchling the self-determined bans on nets by the Orissa Traditional Fish Workers Union the phasing out of day trawlers or the indigenous designing of troll guards at all levels there is an attempt to find answers the orissa movement can lead the way to something extraordinary living systems everywhere are under threat this turtle conundrum is repeated in different situations across the natural world marine or terrestrial turtles or tigers it is a rare conservation movement where despite the immense challenges the varied and opposed thought there is at least the search for a common goal to save both orissa turtles and its traditional fishing community to empower the voiceless with the will and the right to survive the bat
batch of 2006 has gone to sea. Hopefully, many of these hatchlings will brave the odds and return as splendid turtles to continue their cycle of life on Orissa's beaches.